Hey guys, happy Saturday. Hope you're doing wonderful. Hope you're having a great time. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Today we're going to talk about um, the famous artist course. We're on course lesson number five. It's called Artistic Anatomy and the Human Figure in Motion. So uh, this was a series of, I think, 24 or so lessons that uh, these artists here, it was called the Famous Artist Course that was a, a kind of a mail-in like art course that they did back in the 50s and 60s and you know you'll notice these names like Rockwell, Al Parker, Albert Dorn, John Whitcomb, Robert Fawcett, Austin Briggs all these guys were like the top of the class in illustration so they came together created this little course sent it out I don't know how much it cost at the time uh, I bought these actual these were the binders they sent out I um, bought these on eBay. I think it was around 80 bucks, $90 for the whole set. And uh, <clears throat> there were different years and there are different like uh, versions of these throughout the years. They kind of switched them out, changed them. I've heard this is one of the better ones. My only complaint is that it's mostly black and white, which kills me because you look at stuff like here by Al Parker and Al Parker is one of my favorites. And the fact that I can't see this in color really breaks my heart. Let's talk about anatomy. Let's talk about anatomy and uh, what anatomy and fine figure art's all about. Uh, really, this really is just saying, look, you got to think about it from the inside out. When you're thinking of anatomy, you got to think about the bones, skeletal structure, the muscles around it, the flesh around it. Those three-dimensional objects need to be, you need to think about that uh, when you're doing anatomy those bones and the, their lengths, the way they move, is all critical on how you're drawing figures. So that's their big thing. You're not a doctor, you don't need to learn medicine, but you need to learn the structures. It's like this banana I just pulled out right here. Uh, you can draw this outer banana, but to know, but it actually doesn't really work because bananas don't move, but um, you, knowing what's inside this wrapper, what's inside here, helps inform the decisions of why this is. So why does this taper down here like this? Well, because there's this, there's the fruit that's inside that spot, right? So knowing why certain, certain joints are, or certain physical structures on the outside, it's because you know the inside and how they move, things like that. So that's the gist in that. Here's some great drawings by Robert Fawcett, one of my favorite artists. I did an episode about him. Um, uh, probably about a year ago, so I highly recommend go check him out. Um, <clears throat> again, we're just talking about what are these moments where the bone kind of like comes through, where you kind of see the bone coming out of the figure. And excuse me, let me move my my uh, grip on this camera. There we go. Uh, like so, there's a little moments like in the knees, in the shoulders, where the the actual surface of the bone almost comes to uh, to the surface of the skin and you kind of can see these little bumps and, and little moments. The ribs, another good spot, right? So when you're doing these drawings, you start off with these kind of, you know, <clears throat> cylinder shapes. And then we're moving now from the cylinder into kind of like structures. And you're thinking about these, these elements on the body. Kind of cool. Half of the reason why I bought this was because of just to see these guys art I just love it so much and there are better anatomy books out there I would not say this is the lesson to use for all anatomy there's better anatomy stuff there's more modern stuff there's um, you know there's the bridges uh, Bridgman book that I really like in fact we should talk about the Bridgman book sometime Maybe I'll do that as an episode if you guys are interested. Comment below if you want me to do those kind of things. I'll do them. Uh, you've seen this before, kind of proportions, the side view, front view of the male and female. You know, if you remember the old Marvel, how to draw the Marvel way, it's like nine, nine uh, head tall superheroes. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, Again, now we're going into like knowing the skull, knowing the bones and how that influences the face. So 
I thought this was a really cool illustration here of really looking at, you know, a child's skull and how that makes the child an older person. Notice the, the mandible. Uh, notice the zygomatic process here, right, which is uh, the, the zetomatic arch, which is kind of like here, your cheekbone right there. The infant, see the infant head, right, kind of neat. And then you're looking at the sternocleidomastoid bone, uh, the muscle here, and the trapezius. And this is a great, this, I love these here. This is just nice to see, to see that kind of in different positions. Um, this, is, this is a great muscles that you always kind of want to show off. And women, you can see how they're more, um, more delicate or, or less defined. Uh, Albert Dorn. What a great artist. He could do it all, man. He could do these kind of paintings. He did cartoony stuff. We'll see more of his, his stuff. Love it. Going into the torso now, thinking about these twists, and they're going to talk more about the twists, but look, thinking about the bones and structures of, on top of the bones, the muscles, and, you know, abs, pecs, these kind of things we, we know about. Um, how the back moves, too. These, the, cloud, the um, spacula. This was a classic thing. You'll see uh, people who draw women, nipples come straight out, you know, and actually uh, women's nipples, they're actually kind of at this angle. <clears throat> You'll see that a lot in kind of beginner artists. Again, going back into learning how the scapula works with the humerus, this kind of rotation, the deltoids layer, layer over that. arm muscles, this kind of stuff. You could find this everywhere, right? The twisting. This is not too revelatory, but back then in the 60s, 50s, this would have been a great resource to have, you know? The leg and foot, very similar again. Breaking down bone, muscles, skin. Kind of seeing how all this kind of fits out in both front and back side, side positions. And then some sketches of them in motion, seeing how the muscles flex, you know, in different spots. The foot, foots are very di difficult. There's, they're very complicated, you know, maybe not as much as the hand, um, but they are complicated. There's a lot of different little movements there that they can do and position. So um, even when covered by a shoe, there is a lot of like um, things to consider with the foot. There's a skeleton, some little just quick drawings of the skeleton and muscles. And here's some life drawings. We're going to use these in the lesson. They what they do is they give you this this uh, like a lesson plan, and then they have an assignment, and uh, they're going to have you use potentially these these photographs, these black and white photographs to do some drawings, and send and then you send it in. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> here's like an example of like a, a like a practice you do. So here's the the drawing, I mean, the photo you're going to use, you do this kind of quick sketch, kind of cylinder shape-based sketch. Then you start doing a kind of refining the basic shapes into the, you know, elements of the muscles and the skin that you see. And then a more finished drawing with putting some kind of shading and volume kind of uh, techniques. And then here, again, thinking about everything's in these three-dimensional forms and now moving them around in, in, in action and showing them. There's another Al Albert Dorn, just wonderful, um, you know, just amazing drawings, man. Here we're talking about motion, <clears throat> the joints, where the joints move, how they move around. Uh, the wrist is another kind of critical position and a or critical kind of like movement that it can do and and uh, sometimes can be a challenge to really show that you know going this di direction here as well as I mean it really can do a lot of different things <clears throat> uh, 
balance, learning about drawing on balance and kind of the hip motions um, that are done. And you can see ones that are in balance. It's kind of a nice exercise. And these are great little drawings here too. Of the movement of the spine. Twisting. The foreshortening. This is something that all artists, myself included, of course, uh, this is this can be a challenge. This is tricky to really kind of get that foreshortening right. And it's really about making, uh, you know, what you see. It's like the best way to make a convincing drawing of a figure in a foreshortened position is to study what you see very carefully. Okay, the parts nearest us are made to appear larger in proportion those far away. These fingers are to appear larger really than that. Well, than what really it would be, you know, so. Um, it's tricky, foreshortening is tricky for sure. It's all about seeing things. Some cool walking, I love the walking stuff because I always have a struggle with like, just someone casually walking and make them look like they're in movement. Look at these great, these are just great images. I love all these. This shows character, there's action. Look at this is great here. Just brilliant Some sketches. Over here too, you can see it kind of being broken down. Really nice. Some do's and don'ts kind of showing you some things to do, some things not to do. This is like overly wrought muscles. <laughs> so, you know, overlapping, see that? Kind of overlaps, looks more realistic. That's a do, that's a don't. Yeah, it's a good one. Some nice illustrations, here's some photos. I think we're gonna use these photos potentially of this lady or this fella. And here's your assignment. Here's like the assignments they give you. They give you a little like, you know, this is what your art director would tell you to do. And then you send it in. You do a 11 by 14 drawing, you send it in to them, you mail it, and uh, they give you back critique. So there you go. That's the lesson. I think these are kind of fun. I like going through them. Uh, next one will be constructing the head and hands. So we're gonna dive into that. Um, yeah, these are great lessons, dude. Drawing clothes, that'll be a really good one. So thanks for watching. Check out all my other videos and stuff. Uh, if you wanna see what I do, feel free to look at my Patreon and have a great one, you guys. Have a great Saturday, bye.